Hello there and welcome to The Meaningful Stitch. This is episode 47 and I'm Amy Palco and I'm coming to you from Edinburgh, Scotland and this is where I like to share with you my knitting practice and my knitting projects. I have some finished objects for you today, some whips, a bit of a fail and quite a few things that are new to me. So we've got lots to, lots to get through today. But uh, I'm going to start first with some of our admin. So first thing I need to tell you is, is that all of the show notes are available for you in the description box below. However, I do also share those show notes over on Patreon on a free post and you can access some extra photographs and things there too. Patreon is also where you can go to support the channel. I have various different membership options and I also have a Ko-fi account. So if you want to support the channel that way, you can do that too. If you need to send me anything, I have a mailing address and that's also included in the show notes below. And I think that's pretty much it for all of that admin. The next thing I need to say is, is that we have a prize winner, which I'm going to announce now. I might have another prize to announce in a little bit. <laughs> and uh, I will also tell you a little bit about the uh, knit along that we're doing just now too. So, giveaway announcement. There was a episode 46 which was celebrating the third podiversary of The Meaningful Stitch and I asked you to share with me what was meaningful for you about The Meaningful Stitch. And honestly, your comments brought me to tears. It was very, very moving. Uh, it's, it's such a, an incredible thing to know that The Meaningful Stitch means as much to you as it does to me. Uh, however, I could only choose one winner and that was done at random and I'm going to pop the name of that person up on the screen now. It is Marla Lina. Now, I will send you Marla Lina. I'll show you what you've won. This beautiful cocoon tree bag, which I've kept in its protective packaging for you. Um, I have this beautiful little pin here which will also be included. And then I have these lovely little Wensleydale mini balls that I picked up from Northeast Woolfest back in August. So we've got five of these, I think. Yes, we do. There we go. I chose these five colors for you. So I'm gonna pop all of those into the post to you, Marlalina. So if you could get in touch with me, um, at my, you can get in touch with me at my email address, which is included in the description box below, um, or you can get in touch with me on Instagram, uh, whichever way is best for you, and then I will send you your prize. So that's all very exciting. The next thing I wanted to share with you is about the knit along that we're doing at the moment. So we're doing the Get Gallusing Cal, and that's in celebration of the release of my first pattern, the Gallus Scarf. Now. I was going to put a gala scarf on to show you, but I'm a little bit warm just now, probably because I've got this rather cosy jumper on, which I'll tell you about in a second. But um, but yes, the, <laughs> the, the gala scarf, I will show you just shortly because it's an, I have another finished object uh, of a gala to, to share with you. So I'll show you that just shortly. Um, but the gala scarf came out on the 9th of September and that's when we began our knit along and it will run until the 7th of November. So you're more than welcome to join in with us. It is a garter stitch shawl, but it is knit using short rows. You can use up to five different colors. Or you can use as many colors as you like, really. <laughs> but the, the pattern is written for five colors. <laughs> um, I have seen lots of really beautiful variations of it and people's color choices are just amazing. So if you go over onto Instagram and check out the Get Gallison Cal hashtag, you'll be able to see everybody else that's joining in. It is only running over on Instagram just now. I don't quite have the bandwidth to, to take that over onto Ravelry as well. Um, so we're just gonna have that, uh, that knit along run on, on Instagram. So yes, you can join in that as well. And for everybody who has bought a Gallus pattern uh, over on, I've got it hosted on Ravelry, but I've also got hosted on Payhip as well for anybody for whom Ravelry is not accessible. Um, and I've just been really blown away by all of your support. It's been so exciting to see this um, idea that I had come to fruition in other people's knitting and on their needles and, um, and wrapped around them, keeping them all cosy and warm. 
So that's a, that's an incredible thing. It's it's really quite magical, if I'm completely honest. And so so yes, thank you, thank you. And if you haven't yet picked up your your copy of the pattern, if you've not started on your gallus, again the links to that will be in the show notes below. And like I said, I've got two different purchasing options for that. Now you may hear that I'm a little bit hoarse and that's been because I've not been terribly well but um, I am doing much much better. Uh, one of the lovely uh, commonalities in, in the comments that was showing up um, for what the Meaningful Stitch means for all of you uh, were some very lovely compliments about my very soothing voice. Well trust me if I had recorded this last week I would not have got the same comments. <laughs> I did not have a very soothing voice last week. I, ha I hardly had any voice last week, but I do now have a voice. <laughs> so uh, it is a little bit husky still, and it's a little bit lower pitched perhaps than it would usually be. But we're going to we're going to muddle through because I haven't recorded for quite a wee while, and I have so much to show you. But I'm going to begin with the card that I've drawn for us for today, and then we'll move on to what I'm wearing what's off my needles, what's on my needles, and what's new to me. But first of all, the river. And this is a card from Kim Kranz, the, the Wild Unknown Archetypes deck. So I'll just read you the words from the guide. And it says, the river, the stream, the flow, the current. There is a reason so many rituals of change and rebirth take place in the river. It is forgiveness embodied in physical form. Without asking anything in return, the river washes away what is no longer necessary, smoothing over sharp edges and accepting all our mistakes and grievances. Once we step in, we're no longer in control. The river carries us further down the stream of transformation than we plan to go. Its waters have a special gift for reflecting back to us a new and dreamlike vision. Once the tears have passed, we see ourselves as we haven't seen before, with a little more lightness, grace and fluidity. Keep in mind that the you that stands within the river is the real you, full of deep emotion and potential, nothing to hide, nothing to judge. May you drink in the sight of your true self. Uh, and it says, you can only resist the river for so long, eventually it will pull you toward change so you may as well get in with style and grace. And the river is emotion. When you're in its current, you will know it by the bursting forth of tears, laughter, song, despair. All the emotions flow in its current. Well, there we go. That's a beautiful card and I hope it's, I hope it's resonating with you and perhaps it's resonating with your, with your making as well. I quite often feel like my making is a bit like the flow of a current uh, sometimes it takes me places where I don't expect to go and I'll be sharing a little bit of that later on also. And then sometimes it takes me to really amazing, wonderful surprises. And uh, and that's that's when our, our knitting really kind of gives us that experience, that flow experience. There's a wonderful uh, philosopher, psychologist called Mihai Chichenti Mihai, who brought out a book called Flow. And he describes flow as that experience of when we lose track of time. So um, a minute sometimes feels like it, it's, it's like an eternity and sometimes it feels like it's, it's past in the blink of an eye. And when we get that kind of slippery quality to time, when we're really engaged in something which is, you know, challenging us, but not to the degree where we feel frustrated or stymied, um, but we feel challenged and met by it and we feel like we're making progress. And we, when we um, get that kind of experience, we're in a moment of flow. And uh, and I often find that in my own knitting practice. I hope you find that in your knitting practice too. I do believe actually that's one of the reasons why so many knitters continue to come back to the practice over and over again. When we cast off one project and we cast on the next, it's because we're looking for that flow experience. We're looking to be challenged, but just enough. We're looking for our creativity to be inspired and activated. We're looking for that um, that experience of our skill flowing through our fingers along with our yarn. And so that for me is, is what this particular card, this river card is speaking to for my making practice at the moment. 
Okay, will we get to the knitting now? <laughs> what am I wearing? This is my Cargill sweater and it is a pattern by Rebecca Klo, who's the Crea Bea. And I'm wearing it today because Rebecca released her Alder sweater yesterday. So she has a new design out. I have not test knitted the Alder, but I thought I would wear, I'd wear my Cargill because it also is the anniversary of uh, Rebecca's, of the release of the, of the Cargill. Cargill was Rebecca's first pattern. And so she's been designing for a whole year, which if you have been keeping an eye on her design career, that's really quite astonishing because she has published a huge amount over that course of that year. Um, an incredible output, very, very productive, incredibly creative, uh, and uh, and yes, just very, very impressive. So I'm, I'm wearing my Cargill today in honour of Rebecca's <laughs> anniversary as, as a designer and for her first full year of her designing career. So there we go. I have knitted this in Holst Super Soft and I've held it with a strand of Kid Silk from Drops. In fact, this Kid Silk, <laughs> which I will show you again just shortly because I'm using it for another project now. But yes, I held the two. In fact, I think, no, I did, did I wondered if I'd held the Super Soft double, but I haven't. I've held it single and I've held it with a strand of the mohair. It's this beautiful texture, textured fabric with this kind of rib stitch in between. It matches so beautifully for the, for the raglan seam. I think that is just so elegant as a first pattern. This kind of blows my mind. <laughs> um, but it's just absolutely gorgeous. I'll, show, I'll stand up and show you where it kind of sits on me. So just kind of at the the widest part of my hips really and it's got these lovely sleeves you can see it I don't think they have, there were sleeve decreases I think it was just knitted straight down and then um and then you're ribbing at the at the cuff but uh but yes that's the Cargill and it's by Rebecca Klo I'm gonna have a sip of my tea because I can feel my voice going hmm I really hope that my voice is going to be able to take me the whole way through all of the knitting because there is a lot of knitting, my loves. So I will go on to what's off my needles because it's, well, there are three things that are off my needles. The first thing is my plum. <laughs> now, you have seen my plum quite a, well, my plum sweater quite a few times now, uh, but it is finally finished and it has two sleeves. <laughs> it is knitted in cowgirl blues and in their yarn merino twist which is a sport weight and I use the colour under pressure which is this fabulous speckle. It's got these kind of dark greys and then these kind of rusty speckles. However I had four skeins of that I think and I didn't think that was going to be quite enough so I bought a skein of pin-up sport which is also a merino base from my local yarn store, um, Ginger Twist Studio. And this is in the colour Au Naturel, so it's an undyed. And I use that to create this kind of band for the colour work to sit on. And then that made sure that I was definitely going to have enough to complete the sleeves and the full body. And then my colour work is in Fonte Ombelle, which is a mohair wool yarn um, and I chose that because I was I was knitting this in a superwash yarn and superwash yarn is not really known for its qualities for colour work knitting so it doesn't really kind of bond to create that coherent fabric so I needed a different texture in order to kind of compensate I suppose for that lack of stickiness so that's what that's why I've chosen that to kind of create as much of a coherent fabric as I could and I think it was really quite successful. I will take off my cargill and I will put on this uh, this plum to show you. I'm not really wearing the best colour underneath it but we'll go for it anyway. Uh, so I started this before the summer and then I put it down for ages and then I finally come back to it because it just needed the sleeves done. So there we go. 
It is a one size uh, pattern. It is a very, let, let's see, like how much, how much negative ease is there? It's a lot, it's a lot, a lot. Um, but it is very beautiful. I really love it. I love this neckline. I was a bit concerned about the neckline. My mum has knitted two of these and um, she was saying you need to make sure that you do a very tight cast on, otherwise it's gonna keep slipping off your shoulders. So I did do that and I was really pleased with it and I put it on and I took some photographs of it and um, I wore it out that day and as the day went on, it began to slip further and further down my shoulders. I felt like I was having a, you know, a fame moment, you know, um, 1980s musical fame, where everybody's got their, their lovely sweatshirts slipping off their, their shoulders and I felt like I should maybe get myself a pair of leg warmers, but um, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Instead, when I got home, um, I read somebody's comment, I think, so somebody was saying, well, you know, was there an issue with it coming over your shoulders? And I was saying, well, actually, I think it is going to be an issue. And then somebody else commented, this is all on Instagram, incidentally. Uh, somebody else commented saying that um, if you threaded some elastic on the inside of the neck band, then that would stop the problem. And so, let me show you what I did. I did buy some elastic thread and I have woven it through what have I done? the uh, right leg of every stitch going round the whole neck band like that. So that sits on the inside so you can't see it at all from the outside. What I'm actually going to do is um, do this again another couple of times maybe like a few like two stitches down from each other just to um, just to kind of stabilize that a little more but uh, since I did that I've not had the problem of it slipping off my shoulders so um, a bit, I was really pleased that such an easy little fix um, resolved the problem because this was a big knit <laughs> as you can probably tell um, and it's quite because it's merino um, superwash merino it's actually quite um, heavy it's quite a um, there's quite a lot of weight to the garment, so it really kind of does pull down. Um, I think you could, if you knitted this in a different in a different yarn, um, and knitted this again, making making sure you're you're casting on quite tightly, then you probably wouldn't necessarily have the same problem. But I think the elastic thread on the inside of the neckband is actually a, a really neat solution to to the issue of it of the neckband possibly slipping down over the shoulder so i was really pleased with this i love the modification of the color work band i think it's really beautiful i love my colors i am going to be bringing this uh, jumper with me to rhinebeck i have a pair of cord corduroy trousers that are exactly this color so i think i might bring those along as well so that's definitely going to be a jumper that I bring with me to Rhinebeck. And I will be talking a little bit more about Rhinebeck later, but that's my first finished object. It's, it's so, it was so much fun because, you know, it combines colour work with cables, the cables and the sleeves and down the side, which you can't see really well with this beckle. You can see it much better in person. It doesn't really show up on the screen very well but it does show up better in person, I have to say. Um, but uh, but yes, cables, colour work and a bit of lace and then some really smart construction. Uh, it's just very, I always find Junko's patterns are just very pleasing. They really kind of stretch you. When you first look at the, at the instructions, you kind of think they're a bit overwhelming and maybe you can't do this after all. Trust me, you can. <laughs> you just have to take it one step at a time. And actually she describes things very simply and very straightforwardly. And uh, and you, you know, follow the instructions and you get a beautiful garment. Uh, so yeah, really pleased with my, with my plum sweater. I'm very glad that I persisted and continued with it. 
So the next finished object that I have for you is my gallus. So this is my fourth gallus, <laughs> but I think of this one as my woolen folk gallus. Uh, because I have knitted it in some beautiful yarn that was gifted to me uh, from Diamond Lane, which is the hand-dyed uh, yarn from Lamb and Kid, from the Lamb and Kid. And I'm, again, I'm going to put links to all of these in the in the notes below. But they gifted me five skeins of birdie, which I then held double uh, for each one of these parallelograms that form the gala scarf. And the gala scarf is my design that came out on the 9th of September. So I'll go through the colours with you because aren't they just fabulous? This is Rouge. This is Café. This is Grey Marsh. This is Sweet Briar. And this is Dean, which is this fabulous, very dark navy. I don't think uh, words can really express how soft this yarn is. <laughs> I think it's possibly some of the softest yarn I have ever worked with. It is genuinely astonishing. And then not only that, is the depth of colour and the intensity of the colour is, I honestly, was such a joy to work with you know, to see the ways in which these colours were interacting with one another. And like I said, the, the density of the, the intensity of the shades is astonishing. I will show you how it looks on. It is so light and it is so, so warm. So I'm going to be wearing this to Woolen Folk. Uh, I'm going to be on the podcaster patio which is a little bit daunting. <laughs> if you're going to be there, let me know because um, I would love to know that there's some friendly faces in the audience there. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to be on the podcaster patio with my friend Jackie Rose, who's um, from the Caddy Jacks Knits podcast. And Jackie has also knitted a lovely version of the gallus in corresponding colours of birdie as well. So she's going to have hers there as well. So that's very exciting. And uh, I think I'm just going to have this and maybe like I'm going to wear like a jumpsuit or something rather than a full on piece of knitwear because it's looking like it might be really warm. And I, if I'm going to wear a really warm, cozy accessory, then perhaps I don't want to team that up with a really cozy jumper as well. <laughs> so I'm trying to plan ahead as a as a cold climate creature from Scotland um, who doesn't do very well in the heat. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to be very mindful about what I'm going to be wearing when I'm there. So <laughs> don't want to clothe myself in lots of layers of knitwear and then melt. <laughs> but I will be wearing this to to woolen folk. I'm absolutely delighted with it. Um, it's so it's it feels like such a luxury, such a luxury yarn, and um, and it's honestly glorious. And I think uh, the lamb and kid will be at. Woolen folk, and uh, and so we'll be able to. You'll be able to get your hands on some there. But I think they also do. Um, they sell their yarn online as well, and they have a shop in Bainbridge Island over in the states. So that is my gallus. My fourth gallus. <laughs> I think it'll be the last gallus for a wee while. But I say that, but I love knitting them, so maybe not. <laughs> they're just very pleasing. They're, and they're very easy to knit as well. And it's nice to have on the needles. And um, I was actually thinking that maybe I could knit one for my husband because uh, his, his scarf that he's wearing at the moment is from many, many years ago. And he could maybe do with a refresh. So, so that's what I'm thinking. But, but yes, for now... This is, this is my next gallus off the needles. My next project off the needles is this one here. And you won't have seen this because this is, um, this has been started and cast off in the time that I last recorded. 
Now, you know those Facebook memories? <laughs> Every now and again, Facebook throws up a memory on your wall, on your, your feed. And you're like, oh yes, I remember that piece of clothing. <laughs> or maybe that's just me. <laughs> But uh, Facebook showed me a memory from seven years ago, ten years ago. And I was wearing a red poncho. And this was a beautiful red poncho that my husband had brought back for me from Australia. And unfortunately, uh, when I was getting ready to move to this current property, I discovered that that poncho had been gotten at by moths because we had a horrible moth problem in our previous property. Uh, so I had to throw it out and that made me very sad because I really loved that poncho. So when I saw this photograph of myself wearing this poncho from 10 years ago, I was like, I really want another one of those. You know, what would it look like? How would you do it? Etc, etc. Had a wee look around at different poncho um, patterns and things on Ravelry, but I wasn't really seeing one that I really, that really kind of ticked the boxes of what I wanted. So basically what I'm saying is, is that I designed one myself <laughs> to fit my own needs <laughs> and this is it. So you can see it's kind of knitted um, on the, so it's rather than having the, the raglan kind of go uh, cut, cutting down here, it's actually all shifted. So the raglan actually runs down the front and the back and then I've got raglan running down got an increase he's running down either edge and what that does is it kind of creates this point these points that comes down at the front and the back put it on to show you there we go so it has these points that run down to the front like this and to the side and as you can see I've got two by two ribbing like this and I decided that I wanted the neck to be kind of like a, a like a turtleneck, I suppose. Um, again, in this two by two ribbing, but I wanted the two by two ribbing to flow down into the increases uh, in the front and the back. And also I knew that I wanted to put a little bit of shaping in at the back in order to bring the neck up a little bit. Um, because if you're going to be wearing a poncho, you want it to be properly cosy. You know, the reason why you've put it on is because you want it to be warm, yeah? What's going on here? Oh, it's my top underneath. <laughs> I thought I had some, I thought I had a crumb in it or something. So, <laughs> yes, you want it to be kind of up at the back of your neck. You don't want to be getting a chill at the back of your neck. So I'll show you what I did there. So I've done this, oh dear, I'm blowing out terribly now. I've done this short row shaping, which I'm really, really pleased about because it's kind of elongated this, uh, this, uh, di this diagonal uh, in, the, in, the, in the collar, in the neck band. And then as you can see, again, this center two stitch uh, on the ribbing runs right down through through the increases all the way down to the bottom where it continues with the with the increased rib stitches on either side. So as I said I'm really pleased with it. It's knitted top down, it's knitted in the round, um, it's pretty straightforward. It is knitted on a size five millimeter needle. I've used Holst Super Soft held with a strand of kid silk from drops so it's um i think that's a a yarn combination we're all very accustomed to these days uh, because it creates this lovely light fabric but very warm um, and then it's got this really nice drape to it uh, some modifications that i might make moving forwards would be i think i would maybe add about another inch onto the ribbing at the end um, which would take it from kind of a two skein project, maybe a three skein project. But I need to really look at my look at my numbers before getting very clear on that. But I'm calling it the the Kurian the Kurian poncho. 
Curry in is a term that we use in Scotland to mean snuggle up. Um, to curry in, well, basically I'm currying in on a day like this because it's very rainy, very, very rainy and very blustery and very chilly and damp and dark. Uh, it's a day that we would call in Scotland dreich. So it's a dreich day. And on a dreich day, all you want to do is, is curry in. And so I have a poncho now for that exact purpose. <laughs> there we go. And now I can keep lovely and warm and cozy. And I love the, I love a poncho because I can just leave my hands completely free. And um, and I can pop it on over the top of a coat even if I wanted to. Um, I'm just... And I love this colour. The colour um, is Venetian by Whole Super Soft. And I think it's just the... It's the colour 14. It's just the, it's just the red uh, in the kid silk from, from Drops. So I'm just super pleased with how it's worked out. In fact, I've got the red here. That's it. So yeah, I'm just really, really pleased with how these two played together. I picked both of these up at our Knit Night Yarn Swap. Uh, so that was a particularly wonderful wonderful find and I'm so glad that I've been able to put put it to good use so quickly. I, I've spoken to my daughter about possibly knitting her one as well and if I was to knit one for her she's not really into the fluffy yarns she finds them a bit itchy scratchy although I have to say I don't well I don't think she would find the the birdie itchy scratchy but anyway the um, Drops Merino Extra Fine is a DK weight so I think it would work really well at this particular gauge. And it's this kind of charcoal color. And so she said that she would like uh, a Korean poncho in this color as well. So, so yes, I will, I'm gonna knit that up. I'm gonna follow, I didn't, I did write down everything I was doing as I was knitting this. And this knitted up in a week. So it was a very quick knit. Um, I came up with the idea and I worked it out and, you know, the, with all design projects, I think there's lots of ripping out before we make a proper beginning. Uh, so there was all of that process, but once I did get going, it took a week. Uh, so it, for, it is pretty quick knit because, again, it's knitted on those five millimetre needles. And I have some more of my tea. So, yes, um... The, 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 they knitted up pretty quickly, so I think I can knit up one for Aurora pretty quickly too. So, um, so yeah, I'm excited to do that for her. Gosh, I think I might just keep this on because it's very cosy and comfortable. <laughs> so that was all my finished objects. The plum sweater, the gala scarf and the birdie, and now this curry in poncho. Uh, you might remember I was working on another project that you might have expected to have been off the needles by now and that and it's not and that is because it's a bit of a fail and perhaps that's not surprising because of what I chose to name it but <laughs> but the ugly shawl which is this one with the with the baubles and the it's a shame because actually now that I'm looking at it, I'm having second thoughts. But um, this is a design that I was working on. I had already knitted a one skein option in, oh gosh, what was it? Jeans, Kremke Jeans Reborn, which is a 300 millime milli millimeters, not 300 millimeters, 300 meters to 100 grams <laughs> of recycled denim. And I'd knitted one, I'd knitted a kind of a version of this, just using that one skein to wear in the summertime. And then I decided that I wanted to knit like a heavier weight winter version. And I cast this on and I love this yarn. It is, I just love it. It's beautiful. It's actually a little bit more pinky than is showing up on the screen. I'm, I am, I'm, I know that I'm not going to get accurate colours today because I am having to use artificial light because we've got very dark weather outside. But it is absolutely glorious. It's hand-dyed BFL Gotland 
uh, from Nervous Fibres, who is Charlotte, who is based over in Glasgow. And I picked this up at the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase earlier this year in March in Perth. And I got three skeins of it. And I thought this would be a three skein option for the Aglae shawl. Now the reason why I called it the Aglae shawl is because I was knitting it during the retrograde period of Mercury retrograde and Venus retrograde. And uh, all of that retrograde action means in the skies, in the, in the astrological um, charts, means that um, you're going backwards and forwards over the same area, over the same territory. And that's very much what I was doing with this particular pattern because you can see it's got all of these bobbles. And to do a bobble, you are basically knitting over the same stitches more than once. Uh, and the word aglay comes from a Robert Burns' poem, um, which says, The best laid schemes of mice and men gang after glee, which means the best laid uh, plans of mice and men often go awry or askew. So a glee means awry. Um, or askew, and I thought this would be a really lovely um, kind of talismanic piece that we could create for ourselves, uh, which would give us resilience for those times when our, in our life when things go awry. However, <laughs> I cannot remember having to rip out a project quite so much as the ugly shawls. The smaller version and the larger version, uh, my stitch count keeps going off. It's like I cannot, for whatever reason, and I don't know why, I cannot keep to my stitch count. And uh, I find it very frustrating. So then when I get to one of these rows, when I want to do my eyelets or I want to do my bobbles, my stitches don't my stitches don't behave there's there's either too many of them or there's not enough and then i have to try and figure out where i went wrong and rip it back again and fix it and so it, this has been sitting on the naughty step <laughs> in the naughty corner and i basically had decided that i wasn't going to complete it i was thinking if it is this frustrating for me to design and to knit, it's not going to be an enjoyable knit for other people. So why am I doing that? And isn't a kind of a core value of my knitting practice, and, and certainly if I'm going to be designing knits for other people, it's to experience that that flow, you know, that I spoke about at the top of the, the top of the episode. It's not about um it's not about making things so incredibly frustrating and challenging that you that you end up having to rip out all the time. So I was really quite decided actually that I was going to rip all of this out until I pulled it up to show you just now and now I'm looking at it again and I'm going, but I really like it. <laughs> so can I push past all of that to get to the point? The place where I'm at right now is, is that I've got another bobble row. So basically there's this repeat here of the two rows of the eyelets and then we've got the bobble row and then the two repeats of the eyelet rows. And then we've got a garter section here. And then again, the two eyelets, bobbles, two eyelets. And that, that repeat should go three times before I cast off. So I'm roughly halfway in designing this this project this this shawl so I either figure out where I've gone wrong again <laughs> and try and fix it um, and figure out my numbers and continue or I just write it off and rip it back and reclaim the yarn and use this beautiful yarn for another project I haven't quite decided Okay, I'm going to stop for a second and I'm going to go and get myself a glass of water. Okay, let's see how long we go now. <laughs> uh, so, on to what's on my needles. Now, I have two projects on my needles just now and one thing that's going to be next on my needles. So, I will share with you 
the project that I've made the most progress on so far. And it is this beautiful yoked top jumper. Here it is. And this is a jumper that I've actually had my eye on for a very long time. It's called the Musso and it used to be a free pattern from Espace Tricot and when I went on to do a little bit of research on it for my notes before I started recording I discovered that it was no longer available as a free pattern and actually they have combined it into a collection of 10 circular yoke patterns from Espace Tricot. It's very reasonably priced. I think in um, in British pounds it was five pound fifty five for ten patterns. <laughs> so so yes, it's not it's not it's, it's an expensive collection, and the Mousseau is included within that collection. And like I said, it's a, it's a very basic circular yoke design, uh, and it is supposed to be knitted using two strands of mohair. I am not using two strands of mohair. I am using this absolutely glorious yarn, which was gifted to me by Needle and Fred. I will just show you Needle and Fred. And it's in the colorway Rose Mold. <laughs> Uh, it's 350 meters to 100 grams and it's a fingering four ply weight and it's 69% silk, 22% mohair and 9% polyamide. Now, I think, so this was sent to me by Libby, thank you Libby, <laughs> who dyed last year's Perth Festival of Yarn uh, colourway, which was called, was it called Perfection? I think it was. <laughs> it was an amazing uh, and glorious shades of green. And I got, look, I think I got three skeins. I think I got three skeins of the mohair and two skeins of the BFL. I, I, just, I haven't knitted with it yet. I do have a project in mind, but I haven't yet cast that on. Maybe that will be a lovely winter project. I don't know. But anyway, uh, when Libby sent me that uh, yarn for um, Perth, she also sent me three skeins of this incredible yarn that she was experimenting with. Uh, so I don't think it's actually available uh, to purchase, but it is, it is really, really lovely. I think possibly Fibre Space maybe do a similar base. Um, so if you're interested in the base, then you could probably go and check that out from them. I cannot remember. Is it called Fairy Wings? I might be reaching there. Oh, if I'm wrong, I'm going to pop it <laughs> on the screen just now. But I think Fibre Space do a similar um, base. But this is hand dyed by Libby in this amazing rose mould colour. When it is like, like a proper gold sections. And then these lovely sort of copper moments. And uh, I'm just coming up for a sleeve separation. I'm not that far off it. Maybe about another inch or so. So, um, so yes, it's so soft because of the silk content. It is just absolutely gleaming. And I thought it would be a really nice piece for like a, like a dressy piece you know, like an evening wear piece. I think that knitting can really lend itself very beautifully to elegant uh, evening wear, but generally that's not what it's used for, but I would really like to use it for that, so. And this is such a gorgeous high lux uh, fiber that I think it would just, I mean, it just glows. And this Mousseau pattern, it is, it's simple and it's lovely and I think it's just going to really showcase the yarn. I'm not too worried about yarn pooling. Um, I haven't been alternating my skeins. I think when I come up to maybe about 10 grams or so left, then I think I'll probably start alternating the next skein in. So just to make sure that um, I've got an even, 
an even transition from one skein to the next, although that said, all of my skeins look, they all look very even, so, um, so yes, that probably won't be a problem, but um, I think that's always a wise, it's always best practice, I think, to do that with hand-dyed yarn, because that's the nature of it, um, so that's, uh, I think that's probably what I'm going to, what I'm going to be doing, but yes, the Mousseau by Espace Tricot. I think it was actually Melissa from Espace Tricot that designed this and she has now gone on to found Sonder Yarn Company which is an, another amazing yarn dyeing company based over in Canada and um, Espace Tricot was taken on uh, again uh, by by two others and so that's uh, so Spastrico is still um, an ongoing yarn shop and I would love to go one day and uh, please please Montreal I love Montreal <laughs> I went when in my 20s and I just had the most fabulous time and I've always wanted to go back so I wasn't really a, a hard coordinator <laughs> back in my 20s I was focusing more on kind of academia and all of that kind of thing but um but yes, I would love to go back and I'd love to go and visit Espace Tricot. I think that would be amazing. But yes, this is one of the one of the designs that I think that Melissa did for for them. So yeah, just a basic top down circular yoke in just the most fabulous, gorgeous colour. <laughs> so that's a joy. I'm really enjoying knitting this. It's just just because it's beautiful beautiful yarn. The next project that I am knitting is is actually in mohair and it's not meant to be so apparently I'm just contrary. <laughs> so my friend Jackie Rose has brought out her first paid for pattern. It's called the Soho Square. It comes in various different sizes. There's a large wrap, there's a scarf, there's a wink and there's a skinny wink, I think. <laughs> and the wink is the is a smaller version of the of the um, of the larger wrap. And for an explanation of the name, I would re and the whole pattern actually, I would really recommend that you go and watch Jackie's uh, episode on the Caddy Jacks Knits uh, channel, which I will link to below, and she will talk you through what the, the genesis of the pattern, uh, various different ways in which to wear it, how to choose your colours, and she will also tell you why it's called the wink. So I've cast on a wink in uh, mohair. So my idea is, is that it's going to be this very, very light, um, lovely little scarf that I'll be able to tie, kind of like a silk, like the silk scarves, but fluffy. <coughs> And the, so the Soho Square uses four colours. There's two main colours and two contrast colours. And it's a square and it's, and it's used, you knit it using your short rows. But it uses this um, clever calculation in order to position some contrasting stripes. It is so stylish and beautiful and it looks like really it is really meditative and lovely knitting and uh and yeah so i will show you my color so this is shibui no it's not shibui i'm telling porcupines it is ito sensei um i can't remember what the color is called though and i don't have the band Oh, uh, no, that's not it. <laughs> I was like, oh, there it is, but no, that was not it. No, I don't have, I don't have the band, so I'm not sure, but it's this fabulous kind of bright coral shade. And my con my um, other main colour is this colour here, which is, again, Ito Sensei. Um, I think it's called Coke. Yeah, it's like a Coca-Cola colour. So these are my two main colours. And then my contrast colour is this one here, which is Shibui Silk Cloud in the colourway Pollen. I don't know how I remembered that, but I did. <laughs> and this is my other colour, which is Drops Kid Silk in the colour, 
think it's lavender. It's the same colour that I used for my Cargill sweater, which of course is now inside out and on the floor, so I will have to fix that. <laughs> but yes, it's um, it's the same colour that I used to hold with the, the Super Soft in the colourway Viola for this jumper. But I think those colours together are completely fabulous and it's just going to be this beautiful light but warm little scarf that I'll be able to tie around my neck or around in my hair or around my bag or I think it's going to be just lovely. So I'm really enjoying that. I'm enjoying playing with the colours. I definitely see myself knitting a larger one of these possibly over the winter time when I get back from from my travels. Uh, I think casting on a, a Soho square would just be the most lovely, nurturing, kind, gentle practice knit that I could that I could possibly cast on. So that's my that's my intention. So I'll be working on this just now. At a, a larger version will absolutely be in my in my future. And there is actually a knit along happening for the wink just now, so you can go and participate in that as well. But like I said, all the details for that are over on the Caddy Jacks Knits channel and uh, we'll link to that below. So that's what's on my needles right now, that's what I'm working on right now, but uh, what will be next on my needles? Well, it will of course be the West Knits MCAL because it's a highlight of my year. As I said to, as I said to my knit night the other day there, that um, the release of the first clue for me always feels like Christmas. Uh, but I don't have to cook a three-course meal for everybody. <laughs> I get to just relax and enjoy it. That said, I've been super busy the last couple of days and I haven't had a chance to cast on yet. So and then I thought, well, I will just hang off a little bit longer so I can show you my beautiful yarn in the skein. But before I do that, I thought I would just talk to you a little bit about the previous MCALs. Um, because I've got my my pile here of four MCAL shawls that I've knitted in the past. So I just thought I would show you them, show them to you because I love every single one of them. This I knitted in Snailden, which is this wonderful, very, very soft um, yarn. I think, is it from, is it from the Faroe Islands? I could be completely wrong on that, I'm afraid. I can't quite remember where it's from, but it is just beautiful. Midwinter yarns used to stock snailed in, but they no longer stock it, so I don't know. Where, I don't even know where I would get it from anymore, but I just love knitting with this. And this was actually the shawl that I took with me over to Holland, and I visited uh, Stephen and Penelope, uh, the yarn shop that Stephen West uh, co-owns. And uh, I went to The Hague and I popped into Cross and Woods in The Hague, which is another wonderful yarn shop. I had a really, really nice time. And that was our last uh, trip abroad before the pandemic. So that was 20, that's how I know that this was the 2019 uh, shawl, which was called Starflake. And it was knitted um, in a modular pattern. So in a modular design. So the first clue was to create this kind of star shape using modular parallelograms. Uh, and then the rest of the shawl clues built off of that with a, with a wonderful brioche section and then kind of short rows and uh, big eyelets and oh, I just and this fabulous long, long stripy eye cord that took forever, but was well worth it. <laughs> Oh dear, this voice is not um, behaving. My apologies, darlings. So there we go, that's the Starflake, that was from 2019. And then we had Slip Stravaganza. And I knitted, this is the first time I, use, I used Holst Super Soft for the MCAL and it's, created this really wonderful light but warm fabric. This I think is a project that really sold me on Holst Super Soft. 
Um, and that was the first year that Stephen introduced the idea of a mohair dare. And so actually, weirdly enough, in this little bag here, which I've got beside me, which is a, incidentally a cocoon tree bag, um, I actually have the leftovers of that mohair dare that I included in this. How strange is that? I would have that on hand. Goodness me. It's a very, very small amount. <laughs> this was a Qing fibre mohair silk. Um, I think it was in the colour Punjabi. I'm not sure. I did try and get some more um, from Loop London, but unfortunately they didn't have any. So I think I got a different colour called Palenque, which I have not yet knitted up, but I do also have an idea for that project. I think maybe one day I should record an episode with um, going through some of my my sort of more long distant project plans because I have lots of yarn that's been put together into particular bags in order to knit particular projects and I don't know maybe you might be interested in having a wee sneaky peek at those um, but anyway this was slip stravaganza. It was all about exploring slip stitches. So the first clue was this section that we created here and then we built out from there. And it is a, it was a five skein shawl. So it is really, really, really big. But I don't know why, I feel like a frilled lizard <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> I meant that as a compliment to me and the shawl and the lizard. <laughs> but there's just, there's something, I don't know, wonderfully extravagant about it. It doesn't go with a poncho at all, I'm afraid. But there's something, yeah, so fabulously extroverted about it that, um, I don't know, I think it's, I think it's fabulous. <laughs> This is absolutely one of my favourites. <laughs> so that was a, the slip extravaganza, And then the following year, because it had such success knitting with Holst Super Soft, I decided I was going to do the shawlography in Holst Super Soft. And this is the version that I did of that. Um, so we started off, this was the first clue up here, this section here, and we built down from there. And uh, this was the year, this was the year of the shrimp, <laughs> as people were calling it. Uh, these little I-cord sections here, which was a lot of work, but actually I love the texture of it. And I added a little bit of mohair to mine, which I really like. Um, and I added a bit of mohair as well to these sections here and this section here for my brioche. Uh, there was quite a few people who didn't really like the, the border, but actually I really did like the border. Um, and then I added, that what, what my modification for this year was, was that I added the, the fringe. And I was really pleased with that. So I will show you how it looks. I chose my colours based on a project bag that I had inherited from my gran. And I think that's a really good way if you're struggling to put colours together is to look for patterned or printed fabric that you really like and then use that as a as a um, inspiration palette for you to pull your colours together for, a, for, a, for an MCAL in particular. I think that's very helpful. Um, this year's MCAL was a little bit easier in regards, I think, to choosing colours because it was all based on a gradient, but I will talk a bit about that in a second. Because before then, we have 2022, and I knitted this Twists and Turns, it was called, and I knitted this in a single ply merino, and actually this green here, this very pale green, is a single ply merino linen. Uh, the sort of this colour here, this fabulous shade here, I think this is called Amber. And it's by Olan. And then I have the pink, uh, which was Grubby Pink by Stranded. 
And then I have this fabulous soft uh, green, minty green, which was Shiver, and that's by Nervous Fiber. So this was a massive project, uh, well, it is a massive project, so it's a massive clue one, because we started with this section here that included these braids. Now, normally clue one is a lot less labor intensive, but this really was pretty heavy up front. Um, and I think a lot of people weren't enjoying the process and, and kind of dropped out at that point, which is a shame because it did really kind of form this incredible centerpiece. And we then built upon that in a modular way. I think of this section almost like dragon wings. <laughs> and then we've got these fabulous wavy bits. I added a bit more. You, you see, I really got into the idea of a mohair dare. <laughs> I added mohair to these, to these sections here. And then there were this, um, the, this was fantastic, the I-cord embellishments to our, in our cables. I really like that. I'd never seen anything like that before. It was very innovative. And there's a little bit of twisted rib. And then we've got this kind of chevron section with the garter ridges. So what I would say about this, after having knitted the last couple before this with, with whole super soft, and that being such a lightweight wooly wool, it was very different to knit with super wash merino again in the single ply. So it's actually very, feels very heavy, um, very luxury, very drapey. Um, but what I would say is I do kind of, as somebody who wears a lot of shawls, I did find it slightly hard to style, but I quite like this way of wearing it. So there we go. And so that was that was last year's uh, MCAL, and it was called Twists and Turns. This year's MCAL is called Geo Gradient, and uh, the instructions were to choose four skeins that worked within a gradient. Clue one came out on Thursday and I was really really excited and I, and I am really excited <laughs> excitement has not abated <laughs> however there has been a bit of um, difficulty around the beginning of this particular MCAL um, because some people were perceiving a particular symbol um, in the in the center of the of the project of the of the clue that, that we were knitting and so there has been an alternative um, option uh, that's that's now replaced that. And so lots of people are doing various different modifications and things as well. I think modifications are always very fun part of the MCAL uh, to, you know, to take the the mystery and then to, to bounce from that into something which is uniquely yours. Um, so, I have decided that what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the clue one as it now as it now has been published. I was wondering whether to you know rearrange some colors or whether to work with some of the other mods that have been that other people have been working up. But then I just thought actually what I want to do is I want to fully enter into the spirit of the MCAL as as Stephen is devising it. So. I'm I'm going to knit the knit the version, and I'm not going to describe it because obviously uh, I'm not giving away any spoilers here, and I, and I haven't knitted it already, so I have nothing to show you. So, <laughs> but what I can show you is my colours. So that's what I'm going to do now. And the colours I've chosen are from a very very special wool, a, a new yarn line that uh, I was very fortunate to be gifted. And I wasn't just gifted the four skeins that I'm about to show you, so I'll show you the full the full um, selection just shortly. But for now, let me show you my colours. So this is my gradient. So we're going to go from this colour here to this colour here to this one here, and then we're going to finish up with this one here. And you'll see that the label says the Scottish Yarn Festival, and that's because it's their new custom yarn. It is 
it's really really lovely it's very soft but it's again it's like a woolly soft and um, it's not it's not prickly or it doesn't feel dry to the touch and um, it just it feels delightful it is 80% Shetland and 20% Cheviot this is the four ply version and it's th 350 meters to 100 grams you can see it's kind of got this sort of slight heathering through it. I'll show you the colours a little bit closer. And this is one of the natural undyed. Uh, there's two natural shades. This one is called Tate and it's the grey based one. And that's my, those are my colours for casting on the West Knits MCAL. I'm so excited. So these colours are Tate, this is Fraser, this is Duncan and this is Wallace. Duncan is particularly special to me because Duncan is one of my ancestral family names. So uh, so yes that's that's a very significant one for me. I love that I love that colour. So I had to absolutely choose that one for this first project, this first time working with this yarn. So much so, my loves, I have bought you a skein of Duncan, and again, it's the four ply version. There is a DK weight version, but this is the four ply. And I also picked this up from Blue Dot Yarns, uh, from Kate, who makes these beautiful stitch markers that I use all the time. And so I thought I'm gonna pop that together as a little, as a little giveaway. So yes, uh, what what could the question be? What do you, what do you need to do? What do you, what comment do you need to make? <laughs> well, how about um, how about you tell me about your um, experience of or your favourite experience of going to a yarn festival? And if you haven't been to a yarn festival before then um, what yarn festival would you like to, would you like to go to? Uh, so maybe that's a, a comment that includes the words yarn festival and I will enter you into the, the giveaway. Um, please make sure that uh, you have liked and subscribed um, for this video and this channel and also please know that I won't respond to the comments telling you that you've won. I will only share that in the next video that I record. So if somebody comes along who says they're me, to connect with them over on Telegram or something, it's not me. I don't have a Telegram account. <laughs> so um, yes, I will only announce the winners in the next video. Okay, the winner in the next video. So that's, that's to say that up front. So those are the four colours I'm choosing. However, Eva, who came up with this beautiful, these beautiful colours, this beautiful yarn, and who is the director of the Scottish Yarn Festival and the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase, gave me one skein of every colour of the whole palette. So... Let me show you. They're all named after clan names. So this is the other undyed skein. So you can see we've got this kind of silvery one and beard, which is this one. It's got a much more sort of be beigey brown tone to it. Then we have Colhoun, which is this beautiful green. And then we have Bruce. Which is this lighter blue. We have Dewar. Those of you who have been to um, Scottish Yarn Festival might recognise uh, the name Dewar because we, uh, because it's hosted at the Dewar Centre <laughs> in Perth. Then I've got Christie and of course Eva's second name is Christie so we've got Eva Christie. So we've got this colourway. And this is Anderson, which is beautiful dark teal. And we have Gordon, which is this fabulous deep navy. Can you see these shades? They do look more um, like themselves further away from the camera, I have to say. So Christy, Anderson and Bruce. 
And we've got, no, that wasn't Bruce, that was Gordon. This is Bruce. <laughs> Beard, Tate, Cohoon. <laughs> and then we've got Fraser, Wallace, Duncan, and Fre and Dewar. There we go. There's all the colours. Aren't they amazing? <laughs> What an incredible gift. I mean, honestly, just absolutely blown away. And the wonderful thing is, I'm, you know, I was thinking I really wanted to record this podcast a lot earlier, but actually I'm, I am a big believer in divine timing. I think that something happens exactly at the time it's supposed to happen. So um, it just so happens that I'm recording this the weekend after Eva has announced that these yarns are now all available online from the Scottish Yarn Festival website. So if you would like to go and get yourself some of this absolutely beautiful yarn, then you now can. So it was available for purchase at the Scottish Yarn Festival and now it's available to purchase online. So you can go and treat yourself to some as well. Eva and Katie from Celia McWheely are also going to be going to Rhinebeck. They are going to have a booth at the Woolen Folk Festival on the Friday, the same one that I'm doing the podcaster patio at. And they have asked if um, I would do a kind of a meet and greet section uh, segment at their booth. So I'm also going to be doing that over there. Eva is going to be bringing over some of the yarn, I think just for squishing purposes, for display. Um, it's not going to be for sale there, but you are going to be able to see it in person. So if you are going to Woolen Folk, um, then maybe make your way over to the Scottish Yarn Festival booth and then you can, you can find out a little bit more about the yarn and then you can order yourself some online and, uh, and it will be delivered to your door afterwards which might be better because then you don't have to try and fit it in your suitcase. <laughs> so there we go. That's that's what I'm casting on next. I'm casting on the West Knits MCAL. I am going to be doing the revised Clue one that has just uh, that's just been um, devised over the last 24 hours, I think. And uh, and that is my yarn choice. So I'm going to be doing it in those fabulous and that fabulous red gradient and using this incredibly beautiful new yarn from Eva. So talking of the Scottish Yarn Festival, uh, that is one of the places that I have, one of the festivals that I've been to since I last spoke to you. I've been to two yarn festivals since I last spoke to you. So this next section, which is called uh, New To Me, is perhaps a little more extensive than it would normally be. Although that said, I'm gonna to have to take this off. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why I'm so, so draped in all of these uh, layers of of knitwear. I'm now absolutely roasting. But anyway, um, yes, <laughs> new to me. It's a rather large section, um, but not perhaps as large as you as you might think. Um, I did try and restrain myself and I was very intentional about what I bought and um, also I did spend an, an awful lot of my time at both festivals blethering to people. I'm a big blether, I like to talk, I like to connect with people, I like to have conversations so that's what I did mostly at, <laughs> at both Perth and uh, and then I went down to Yarndale and I did more I did more blethering so that's maybe explains what's going on with my voice. No it doesn't, that was a cold. <laughs> so, uh, so let me show you, well let me tell you a little bit about uh, the Scottish Yarn Festival and what happened and how it went and what I bought. So the Scottish Yarn Festival ran on the, I think it was the 9th and the, it was the 9th and the 10th of September. On the morning of the 9th, I launched the Gallus scarf pattern on Ravelry and on Payhip. And I had printed off these beautiful little cards. Do I have any around? No, I don't. I printed off these beautiful little cards that had an image of the Gallus scarf on the front and on the back there was a QR code that people could take a photograph of and it would take them directly to the website that shows you all the purchasing options. 
So I took those along, I took all the versions of the galas that I had knitted and my friends from Knit Night who had also knitted galluses uh, brought along theirs and we and I had a display table set up for the hour between 11 and 12 on both the Saturday and the Sunday um, along with the cards so people could come in and see the beautiful the beautiful variations of the gallus and they could take a, a card away with them that would help them find the pattern to download. So that was a lot of fun. It was a little bit frantic getting to Perth and getting everything set up. But once it once it did get um, set up, it was it was really lovely. My mum had come over, so um so she was there, and my daughter came through from Dundee. So it was the three of us, and we had a really lovely day together. It was very very warm. It was the warmest I think I've ever experienced, um a yarn festival, and certainly a yarn festival in Scotland. <laughs> I think it was possibly one of our warmest weekends out of the whole year, which was astonishing, truly. Um, but uh, but we persisted <laughs> in draping ourselves in, uh, in long scarves and, and wearing shrugs as well, because I was also hosting the Scottish Shrug Club Cal. And so the invitation was for people to come wearing their shrugs and then come and do a meetup. But uh, unfortunately, it was really far too warm for people to wear um, wear their shrugs. A few a few game individuals did. Um, lovely knitters came over with their with their shrugs, and I think we got a little photograph taken. And um, but yes, it was it was really very warm, so it wasn't wasn't really shrug weather. Uh, but it was uh, it was a wonderful event. It was very well um, attended. It was very busy. It was very buzzy. Um, which was good fun. There was lots of fabulous yarn to squish, lots of beautiful project bags, um, and it was just there was a really lovely vibe for the whole for the whole weekend, uh, which was which was great. Uh, I will show you what I got. So what did I get? I got this. I bought four skeins of this fabulous Lammer Muir heart. What's it? Heart stains, uh, Shetland DK. Although it's really more of a maybe more of a sport weight because it is, um, what does it say? Two hundred and sixty meters. That's two hundred eighty four uh, meters to a hundred grams, and it's just so lofty and bouncy. And I just love Lammermuir yarn. Um, it really has my heart. Um, it's uh, Shetland flock uh, which is really not uh, which is local to me it's in the Pentland Hills and um, which are to the south of Edinburgh and uh, I could literally hop on a bus at the terminus here and um, down by down by the harbour and then get off at the other terminus at the other end and be at the Pentlands so <laughs> um so yes it's a it, it's a local to me uh, flock it's a local to me yarn and um, they've just started doing these fabulous dyed shades and they had four of these skeins left and this is called Bracken. So I bought those four and I was very, very pleased. Um, and actually I think that might be the only yarn that I actually, oh no, that's not true. I was gonna say that's the only yarn I bought, it's not true. My mum bought me this fabulous skein of Zakami yarn which Zakami are um, are wonderful uh, yarn dyers from Edinburgh Melinda and Gergie and this is a hundred percent brushed Suri alpaca 400 meters to 100 grams and it's very very soft I love this color it's very soft I picked it up and I put it down and then my mum picked it up and then bought it and I was like oh I, but I really like that one <laughs> and then she turned around and gave it to me so <laughs> so that was funny. <laughs> so my mum bought me this one, which is very kind. And then my auntie, who came on the Sunday, uh, it was really lovely to, to spend some time with her as well. And she bought me this cone of uh, lamb's wool four ply from New Lanark. It's in the colourway Dark Graphite. It's 450 grams. And it's got this kind of tweedy fleck through it. So it's got like gold and maybe sort of slate blue tweed 
through this black yarn. I just think it is stunning. And also, I, I've looked several times, but it doesn't seem possible to buy four ply yarn from their website, from the new Lanark website. So when I see it in person at a stall, um, it's, it's um, yes, absolutely something that I want to pick up there. So, so I've got this fabulous cone that was bought for me there. And then my daughter, <laughs> my Aurora, uh, she bought me this fabulous um, skein from Needle and Fred. It's the big BFL. It's 600 metres. It's 150 grams. Uh, again, it's a four ply. It's a four ply weight or fingering weight. And um, it's in this gorgeous gold colour. So both the cone and this skein were ostensibly bought as very early birthday presents because it's not my birthday until November. But... <laughs> But uh, but yes, they're they're very early birthday presents, so that's really very kind. Um, I then went ahead and bought two skeins of mohair from Edelweiss Fibers, which is another Edinburgh-based yarn dyer. This is in the colour dried sunflowers, so I have bought these to go with this. I think they are really really beautiful together. It was also on a gold kick. <laughs> Um, so my idea is is that I think I could knit, and I was thinking about knitting a tolster, um, and then I was wondering whether actually it was a better idea to knit um, like a stripes by Andrea Mowry and do a circular yoke rather than a raglan. I'm still not quite decided. But the idea of it would be that for one of the stripes I would hold the two yarns together and then for the next stripe, I would hold a strand of the mohair single, and I would um, I would move through the whole garment that way. I think that would uh, that's what I've got in my head. That's what I want to do. So I just have to make some decisions. So I won't cast that on until I've finished the muso, but um, but I think that could be a really fun, a really fun knit. So I've got eight hundred and forty meters, I think, of this. Let me double check that. Uh, yes, I've got 840 metres of this Edelweiss. That's there. Edelweiss. That's better. Yeah. Edelweiss fibres. And it's their mohair silk lace weight, 72% um, mohair, 28% silk. And it's 420 metres for 50 grams. So, I have plenty of this and 600 meters of the BFL so I think that would be just the right amount to do to do something really lovely so I'm really excited about that so that's what I got from from Perth it was a very exciting weekend it was very full on it was so lovely to spend time uh, with my mum and to catch up with my dad and um, that was really very precious I really enjoyed that and then also we had my kids come over as well to the to the flat just before we left for Perth and then Aurora came to Perth with us and then my auntie came on the Sunday. So so it was yeah, it was really full on and it was really lovely and it was just full of family and friends and fibre and yeah, all good things. All good things. So then two weeks after uh the Scottish Yarn Festival was Yarndale and my auntie, my, my other auntie, uh, my auntie Lorna, who has the cocoon tree, was vending at Yarndale. She had previously vended at the Scottish Yarn Festival the year before when it was the Perth Festival of Yarn. And, um, but my, my cousin who uh, works the stall with her wasn't available that weekend, so she wasn't able to do Perth this year. Um, instead, she had some bags on the flock table. So if you were lucky enough to, to score a cocoon tree bag, then that's probably where you got it from. So, but she was free to do Yarndale a couple of weeks later. So, um, so Lorna had invited me to go down and work the stall with them. So I said, that would be lovely. I've never been to Yarndale before. And so I had booked my train tickets, I had booked the same hotel that they were staying in, and um, 
and it was all set. So on the morning, I woke up super, super, I think I woke up at like four o'clock. I had to leave the flat at five. Um, my train left the station at quarter past six. Um, it took me to Carlisle where I was going to have to change. And then I changed at Carlisle and got on a train and the train didn't go very far. It maybe went about three or four stops. And then we were all decanted into a bus replacement. Now, if you are from the UK and you travel by train, then you will know what horror the words bus replacement <laughs> can instill in the heart <laughs> of the train traveller. <laughs> so, uh, yes, my one hour journey became a three hour journey. Uh, we were travelling along, the, we were in a big, big, you know, bus coach and it was on these really, really tiny, tiny single track roads going over these very, very skinny bridges and uh, coming around tight corners and facing cars coming in the oncoming direction. And it was all, it was all pretty intense. And, uh, and I arrived at uh, Yarndale at tw just after, just after midday. And, uh, and yes, that was, <laughs> so that was, that was slightly fraught. Um, but when I arrived at uh, Lorna's stall, uh, the wonderful ladies behind Twin Set and Pearls were there to meet me. And uh, you might remember um, Jo, Her jo Harriet actually contributed a couple of her beautiful shawl designs as a giveaway a couple of years ago. And so she had brought some of her shawls to show me. And she had a really, really beautiful one. Uh, I think it was called, I think it's called, now that I'm saying it, I'm completely second guessing myself. So I'm going to double check it. <laughs> um, but she had some really beautiful, she's always got really beautiful patterns. Um, but this particular one um, used some kind of uh, colour blocking. Yes, it is called the Cecil shawl. Um, let me, well actually I'm just going to pop a picture, I'm just going to show you on my phone. That makes no sense to do that, you won't see it properly anyway. I'll pop a photograph up of it here instead. It is such a lovely shawl and I think it would be such good use for some of those leftover balls of mohair because like I was saying, you know, we're so familiar with this, with this yarn weight now of holding this, um, like a fingering weight with, um, with a mohair for jumpers and things that quite often we end up with a stray ball of mohair left over. And what do you do with that? And I think this this kind of pattern, this pattern in particular even, uh, would be a really beautiful use for that. And I really, really like it. So I think one of these will be will be in my, in my future in particular. But it was so lovely to meet them both. And actually I would say over the course of the weekend, I met so many lovely people. If you are one of those lovely people that came up and said hi, thank you so much. Um, it absolutely makes my makes my weekend, makes my festival to, to connect with you and to and to hear from you and, and you know what, what's what's happening for you and what's your knitting practice and what you're working on and you know and, and people saying how much they're enjoying the enjoying this this channel. So that was really, you know, such a highlight for me of that of that whole weekend. So so yes, just sending lots of love to everybody who came up and said hi. That was really very sweet. Uh, as for purchases, uh, I was pretty restrained actually. I was quite impressed with myself because there was because it was vast. It was the um, it was very large. It was it's set in um, Skipton Auction Mart, uh, so it's it's a, quite agricultural, um, but they had you know yarn bombed it and, and, and it was looking beautiful and and there were some animals there as well which was really fun I had to see some some sheep and and there was an alpaca <laughs> so that was really lovely and um, and yeah there was just there was people there that I already knew um, so I got to see Amy again from Mamie and Flory who I had first met at Northeast Wool Fest um, so that was really delightful. In fact, we had coffee the following morning or the Sunday morning before we went back in. So it was just really lovely to connect with her too. Um, Lammermuir were there and um, 
gosh, who else were there? Lots of people that I knew already. So it's just it's just nice to go around and say hi to folk. Um, Anfield, and uh, yes, Anfield were there. Um, gosh, who else? It's all gone out my head. But yes, I did see lots of people I, I already knew and I got to have a chance to, to chat with them as well. And then there was lots of people who were vending there that I'd never seen before. Uh, and that was really, that was really fun as well. So, um, so yes, I just had a, I had a grand time. <laughs> Let me show you what I got though. I, I actually only bought from uh, one vendor because most of the time I was actually on the stall with uh, Lorna at the cocoon tree and I was, and the rest of the time I was blethering. <laughs> But I did buy some yarn from Laxton's. Laxton's are a company that make um, undyed bases that a lot of the um, a lot of the yarn dyers purchase from to do their their hand dyes. But they had some uh, dyed yarn that they were selling. Now they call this one hundred percent British wool. Uh, but they couldn't tell me what the fibre content was. However, it does, I am pretty convinced that actually there's um, some Wensleydale in it. But other than that, I really don't know. But they had this fabulous salmony pink colour. Uh, now these are 100 grams and they said about 220 metres per 100 grams. Uh, so I bought eight of these with the intention, and maybe you can tell me what you think, um, I had the intention of doing a cable sweater. I really love the Alicia, I'm gonna, maybe I'm gonna get this wrong, Alicia Plum's um, Tomorrow sweater, which is a dolman sleeved cable knit. And I thought this would be beautiful. And now I'm completely second guessing myself because this yarn is super drapey. Let me show you, because I also got this fabulous yellow and I got six skeins of the yellow um, and it's the same base. Um, but you can see that actually there is a real drapiness. There is a, it's, it's not a, um, it's not a particularly firm yarn it's going to have that level of drape to it and that's why I think it's got the Wensleydale because Wensleydale is a really drapey fabric and also it's a very shiny fabric so I think there's definitely some of that in it um, but as to what the rest of the content is I really couldn't tell you but with a drapey but woolly yarn I'm wondering whether cables would be the best option uh, so I have actually also purchased the new pattern from Caitlin Hunter and I'm completely blanking on what the name of that is as well let me have a quick look um what's it called she brought it out as a pullover and as a, a cardigan it's called the Tutka pullover so I'll pop a photograph up of that and I thought that would be a good use perhaps for the yellow uh, fiber, but um, the pink one, I would still really like to knit that um, tomorrow jumper. But I'm concerned that is perhaps the wrong fiber for the job. So maybe you can let me know what you think. Have you knitted with a Wensleydale blend? Do you think that would work well in a cable jumper? Let me know. Answers on a postcard. No, no, don't put answers on a postcard. Put, put the answer in the comment below. <laughs> And that's pretty much what I bought. But what I was going to ask you, I had another question. God, I'm just full of questions today. Uh, the other question I wanted to ask you was, um, if you have been to Woolen Folk or you have been to Rhinebeck before, particularly Rhinebeck actually, um, is there some yarn that you think that I should really come home with? Uh, I would like to have a, like a semblance of an idea of what it is that I should be looking for or looking out for. Is there a particular uh, brand or the particular company that you think I should go and check out their booth? Is there a particular yarn type that you think I should be looking out for? 
um, things that are special and local and specific to the area um, that I'm not going to be able to get over in the UK. That's the kind of thing that I'm interested in because really if it's something that I can buy in the UK then I can just order it and, and have it shipped here or I can go and pick it up. Um, I don't need to try and make space for that in, in what will already probably be a very full uh, suitcase. So yes, that's what I'm thinking. So if you know of something that you think or you have a recommendation or you have an idea of something that I should be looking for while I'm at Rhinebeck, that would be really helpful and I would love to hear that. Uh, okay, what's bringing me joy? We're at that stage now. Uh, the first thing that's bringing me joy is my astrology class. I started my astrology class with the Faculty of Astrological Studies uh, last week. We had our first proper class. Uh, we were looking at the luminaries, the sun and the moon. And we were starting to think about, you know, our, our relationship with these bright lights in the sky and what they, what they mean for us. What's our, what's our relationship to them? Uh, what are some of the connotations or stories or... Uh, meanings that we have connected to these to these planetary bodies. Uh, so that was really, really interesting and really kind of helped me to kind of move back into a beginner's mindset because uh, I've been studying astrology for over a decade. I use it in my work extensively, but the reason why I'm going back and doing this course is because I want to move through and get the diploma. And in order to do that, I have to start at the very beginning of the course structure, which means I'm in this foundation course. So if I'm going to be in a foundation course, I need to be able to adopt this beginner's mindset and this connection with a, with a very immediate response to the astrology has been very helpful. So that's the first thing that's really bringing me joy. The next thing is also kind of celestial based. Foundation on Apple TV is without a doubt one of my favourite things that I've watched on TV in a very, very long time. Uh, it's, it's so well acted. It's such a beautiful programme. Um, the story is just, it's absolutely captured me. Um, we are just coming to the end of the second season, we are probably going to watch episodes nine and ten tonight, and then that'll be that'll be all that'll be us caught up. Um, I've no idea when season three is coming out, but I really hope I'm not going to have to wait very long <laughs> because it's just it's a properly wonderful, involving storytelling, and um, beautifully told by wonderful actors. Uh, the cinematography is gorgeous and it's it's just it's really keeping us guessing and it's it's just very thoughtful as well it's based on the Isaac Asimov novels um which he published from about 1948 throughout his whole career so um and actually I just found out recently that Frank Herbert's Dune was actually written as a kind of a response to the Foundation novels, and I love Dune as well. Um, I do think, you know, you can certainly see that once you know that, you can kind of see some correspondences between the two, but they're not the same by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but that is that is very interesting. And then uh, I also think there's something of the sort of the sci the good sci-fi storytelling of um, a show like The Expanse, excluding the final season, which I thought was terribly disappointing. But anyway, The Expanse up till the last season. Um, and I think you could kind of combine that perhaps with The Rings of Power, the, the Lord of the Rings um, series that came out. Um, I thought that was very beautifully filmed. And uh, I think that the, the the aesthetics of that I can, and the kind of the epic nature of the narrative, coupled with the wonderful sci-fi storytelling of the expanse, and then you know with this gesturing as well towards um, another epic sci-fi narrative, um, June. So if you like any of those uh, TV shows or um, then or movies, 
then I think you might really like foundation. I'm certainly really enjoying it. So, foundation. On a slightly different note, Great British Bake Off is back on Channel 4. <laughs> I love the Great British Bake Off. It makes me so happy. Um, it is genuinely a bright light in, in my television schedule. So, um, so yes, Great British Bake Off started back again. Very happy with that. On a Bake Off note, um, I'm afraid I did not produce a cake or any cakes, despite the fact that it was... It was birthday season here, so um, both my sons had their birthdays and my daughter's partner had his birthday. So we had people over to the flat and we had a lovely time. We had some wonderful food and we watched some rather terrible rugby in the, in the World Cup. It was not a good game, but any, anyway, we watched it regardless. And we had lots of laughter and a really lovely time together. And then my middle son, who whose birthday it was on last Monday, was unable to come because he worked as a chef and he wasn't able to get that evening off. And so we did a lovely brunch with him on his birthday. And uh, so that was really nice. And I spent some time going through some old photographs, uh, looking at these tiny little, tiny little babies that then grew up into these incredible men. And... Uh, that was that was really a nice way to kind of personally, I think, honour the birthdays of my children because truly when we give birth to our children, we're giving birth to ourselves as mothers. You know, we we step into a new and in, into a new life, a new phase of our a new chapter of our life. And um, you know, every time we have a, a child, I think we birth ourselves as their mother specifically because I think you know children require. Um, something unique and, and a different relationship from you. You don't, you know, just apply, you know, the one way of approaching everything to all children. You know, there's that specificity, there's that individuality. And you're, there's something that's called out of you to meet that, meet that child in that relationship. So, so yes, it's just been nice to sort of reflect on some of that and, and to honour them and to celebrate with them. So that was, that was really fun. Uh, something else that's bringing me joy, if you follow Ginger Twist Studio on Instagram or you sign up to their newsletter list, then you might know that they are planning a move. And I'm not going to tell you much about the move at all because that is not my news to tell and it has not yet been fully released, but they have announced that they will be moving. Um, what Jess has also shared is that it is going to be to a bigger space. And it's not going to be very far away from where the shop is right now. Uh, so more more details will be coming in the offing. But I would really recommend that you go and sign up for Jessie's newsletter list. Because that way you will be kept in the know. So again, a link to that will be in the show notes. Another newsletter that you might want to sign up for is the Scottish, is the Scottish Yarn Festival newsletter because uh, Eva has just announced the dates for next year's festivals. So the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase will be on the 23rd of March and the Scottish Yarn Festival will be on the 7th and 8th of September next year. Now the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase last year, or this year, this March, just passed, um, sold out. So there were no longer tickets available on the door. So it is a smaller event. It is a one day event. It focuses very specifically on Scottish wool producers. So these are small local producers that are, um, that are often uh, working with, um, directly with the animals um, that, you know, that they then, you know, work with the fiber and produce this produce incredible yarn that is so special and so specific and um just very precious and quite often you can only buy it when you're when you're in that that event it's not necessarily always going to be available online and also it's a finite amount because you know they're working with small numbers of um small numbers of animals and small numbers a small a smaller yield um, of fibre. So once once it's gone, it's gone. You know, I, I was you know, telling you how much I love the Lammermuir yarn 
And, um, you know, I was still thinking about some Lammer Muir y yarn that I bought at a previous Scottish Wool Producer Showcase, I think possibly the first one, which was this amazing blend of Shetland and Gotland. And I used that to knit my um, Minster cowl, a lovely design by, um, by Linda Eriksdottir. And I still think about that yarn all the time. <laughs> But it's gone because it was a finite amount and that's, you know, that's the specialness of it. It's the same as something like I'm a member of the um, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, which sells single cask whiskey. So once the whiskey in the cask is gone, it's gone. Nobody's going to get that, that taste. Um, nobody's going to get to have that experience of that particular whiskey ever again. It's special because it's, there's so little of it. Um, it's, so it then takes on this really kind of um, this preciousness, you know, and, and this real treasure. And uh, so it's an incredibly important event, I think, because it's also, you know, so obviously in alignment with, with Eva's own values, as she's demonstrated with this incredible Scottish yarn, which she says, slow grown in Scotland, mill spun in Yorkshire, transformed by you. So this slow grown in Scotland is very much in alignment with her own personal values because she wants to support the wool industry here and I want to support the wool industry here. You know, uh, Susan of the um, Journal of Scottish Yarns wants to do the same thing. There's lots of people here who are, you know, investing in the, the preciousness of what we have here. And I think the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase is the event where we really get to, where we get to showcase uh, as the name suggests, uh, <laughs> the the wonderful wool that we that we have here. So, so that's going to be in March. Uh, so tickets obviously will be um will will be sold uh, soon. I would imagine, uh, but to get the announcement for that, uh, go and sign up for the for the newsletter list, and then the same coming up for the next Scottish Yarn Festival. And if you don't know much about Scottish Yarn Festival, but you will be at Woolen Folk. Like I said, they're going to be there, so maybe come over to the booth and have a wee conversation with Eva and see if it's for you and if you want to come over to Scotland in 2024 and come and check out the festival, then that'd be fab. I'll be there, more than likely. <laughs> so yes, those dates have been announced and that's bring me joy. One last thing's bring me joy and that is... In the lead up to Woolen Folk and uh, my participation in the um, podcaster patio with Jackie Rose, Jackie and I have been doing a poetry advent on Instagram. So every day we've been sharing, we've been taking turn and turn about to share a poem. And quite often the poem is inspired by the poem that was shared by the other person before. So we're, we do this um, every Every, November, every December in the lead up to Christmas um, but it's actually really fun to do it at a different time of year and um, and I'm getting to revisit some of my favourite poems and some poems I've, that are more recent discoveries and uh, and yes yeah, it's, it's, it's really lovely so um, so yes follow us over on Instagram I am at Amy Palco and you'll find Jackie at at J Domini Rose and you'll be able to follow along with our poetry advent. But I will tell you one of the, well, we'll close actually with one of the poems that uh, I chose, uh, when was it? I chose it, well, it must have been last week actually. Sorry, I feel like I'm doing a lot of searching on my phone for things and I did have this all set up, but uh, because I've had to look at other things, it's disappeared again. But there it is, it's called The Laughing Heart, and it's by Charles Bukowski. Your life is your life. Don't let it be clubbed into dank submission. Be on the watch. There are ways out. There is light somewhere. It may not be much light, but it beats the darkness. Be on the watch. The gods will offer you chances. Know them, take them. You can't beat death, but you can beat death in life sometimes. And the more often you learn to do it, the more light there will be. Your life is your life. Know it while you have it. You are marvellous. The gods wait to delight in you. 
So on that note, my loves, I am going to go and have a cup of tea. <laughs> I'm going to edit this video and get it up ASAP because obviously there's been a bit of a gap this time between the previous episode and this one for various different reasons. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to record before Rhinebeck, in which case I will see you on the other side, unless I see you there, obviously. Um, but I'll see you on the other side of that and I'm sure I'm going to have lots of lots of tales to tell on my return. So in the meantime, take good care of yourselves and I will speak to you all really soon.